Hello, everybody. I don't know why I'm half screen today. We're having some serious technical difficulties here, but um, we will get this. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We're here to talk about the Komodo X that just got uh, officially released today. And I think is what I heard, maybe sold a lot of them today so far, including some of my buddies here. So I have some friends here to come and chat about this. Uh, I haven't really talked much about red cameras on this channel, but I do now own a RED, which I've owned before. And so uh, I wanted to really get into the Komodo X, which is a really exciting release. So uh, let me get my buddies in here. We're just gonna have a little bit of a live discussion. Please get comments and questions in. We'll be here hanging out for a while, just uh, nerding out and talking about Komodo So and Komodo X. So let's see what we have. We have Jeff in here. Hey, everybody. Hey, this is Jeff Fagan from uh, Reach Films. Hopefully you're familiar with Jeff's channel. Um, if not, you should definitely check it out. So, Jeff, thanks for coming by today, man. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you and a pleasure to actually talk to uh, Brandon and Tyler in person because I've heard so much about them. I've seen their channels for so long, so it's great to kind of be in this convo with everybody. It's an exciting day. Absolutely. I think we're all excited. Let me see if we get uh, Tyler in here. Hey, what's up? Hey, this is Tyler Edwards. If you don't know Tyler, uh, also got a great YouTube channel, also great filmmaker. So, uh, com Tyler, how's it going with Brandon? Did we get him sorted out or no? Um, he was still trying to figure out audio, so I just told him to jump on and, and diagnose and troubleshoot as we go along. Because okay. that's that's how live, live production works sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, th yeah, thanks for coming just, by today, yeah, so Tyler. Hand, yeah. um, does someone want to, like, I'll check on uh, Brandon in a sec because I wanted to get, get him in here too. Um, first of all, let's talk about the camera. I think I want to talk about, like, accessories, pricing, uh, market, like where it fits in, how you guys might be interested, or you, you ordered one, Tyler? Um, <clears throat> yeah, the pricing is, I mean, right, pretty much smack dab in the middle of the Komodo and the V Raptor Super 35, I guess, like the, the standard, not the like Rhino one or whatever. So, um, and it like, specs wise it all kind of lines up like right in the middle with with everything but it has a global shutter still which komodo but i think that's awesome and it looks like you get another half stop of dynamic range in the shadows and that's pretty cool because the shadows can get noisy on the komodo like with most reds and um getting that extra stop supposedly in the shadows, that's going to be a uh, super helpful for, um, you know, wider dynamic range shots. I think the S Komodo 6k was 16, st well, 16 plus stops is I think is what they called it. And this is 16 and a half plus stops, which I'm pretty sure that's like what the, the dragon X sensor and the helium sensor was, wasn't it? Or was that 17? I can't remember now. Yeah. I think you know better than me. <laughs> Pretty, pretty close, pretty close, but I, I yeah. you know, it's global shutters, so it's kind of like that offset. Yeah, and honestly, like, I've never felt limited by the dynamic range of the Komodo, to be honest with you. And so that wasn't really, I mean, this was like a huge bonus. I think the other things, like the higher frame rates and the built-in V-mount and the support for the DSMC through dsmc3 monitor those kind of things are, are what really got me excited personally i mean there's obviously more things that we'll talk and the about. audio the, the, the audio is huge because that that's one of the things yeah. that limited komodo from being used in so many productions as a, as yep. an a cam or a b cam all right so hold on yep. we're, we're all over the place here let's we'll talk about audio in a second let's talk about big features first so you had mentioned more dynamic range half more stop half a stop more in the shadows same size sensor i believe uh, you know, same same you know, size sensor, just not the exact same. same sensor, right? Okay. Yeah, I wonder. Wait, if, Tyler, is it the same I'm dimensions? On the size. I'm gonna. I'm about to look. Pull it up on the. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we know it has global shutter. Um, the big differences are going to be frame rates, right? We're getting higher frame rates, so we're getting 6K 80 frames per second, which we think most of us are hoping for 6K 60. Uh, and then higher frame rates. I don't remember the numbers. Ninety six and five K, one twenty and four K. Does that sound right? Sounds right. Okay. Yeah, and I think they're doing more. Um, it's supposedly down the line. I, I asked this on Scott's live stream, but then I 
had to go put the kid down for a nap. So I didn't, I don't know if an answer came out, but I think a widescreen modes are coming later. And usually with widescreen modes, you're able to stretch out the frame rates just a little bit more. So that'd be really cool. So, you know, maybe 5K, 240 to one, you could maybe get like 120 frames per second or 100 frames per second or something like that. Okay. So other than a little more dynamic range uh, and obviously the frame rates, anything else in terms of image quality or like anything just in terms of the way the camera's working? The, the RF lock, the, that was a huge thing for yes. lenses that, that just were too loose on the camera. Okay, so RF lock, it's, the body is the same design, but slightly larger, uh, longer, right? So we should expect to see similar stuff, but the, the locking mount on the front, uh, and then there's all sorts of other accessories and stuff coming out with the camera, which I think is gonna be really interesting for a lot of people. Uh, and first of all, the price, before we get into all the little details, and then, of course, if you guys have questions and comments, please get them in. Uh, we're happy to talk about anything. We got some pretty knowledgeable people in here. Hopefully, we, oh, Brandon's coming back in. All right, let me add Brandon and see what happens here. Brandon, we got you, buddy. Am I Am I on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Audio, that's great. Look at that. So, <laughs> all right, so we got Brandon here. Most of you guys uh, watching this channel probably know Brandon from our podcast, so... Uh, Brandon's also a uh, a red user and uh, a pre order in for. I what? am. I did it. <laughs> yeah. Which is awesome. I did it. Um, so first of all, price. I don't think we even mentioned that, but uh, it's ten thousand or nine 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 five. Um, and uh, I think it fits pretty nicely, like we mentioned before. Um. <laughs> What's Jeff drinking? Drinking coffee. <laughs> um, it fits really nicely yeah, well, in the lineup. Well, I know, I know, it's a fruity mug, but you know, it's. <laughs> I like it. That's, man. Whiskey. I think it That's good. whiskey in your coffee mug. We call that a, uh, in my family. Call that an Uncle Benny. Ooh, I'm taking that term. Okay. Yep. Is 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 there an actual Uncle Benny, or is it just? Yeah, yeah, we okay. uh, we always thought okay. at like Christmas time, Uncle Benny was drinking coffee. Turns out, he was not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So price wise, guys, are you are you? I I mean, when I heard the rumors starting about this, I thought it was going to come in at ten thousand. So I wasn't surprised by that. How are you guys feeling about the price? I was surprised. I thought it would be more than that. I thought it because Jared kept saying half of what. Uh, Raptor and S35 Raptor were, was. So I thought if S35 Raptor was going for 18 and Komodo was six, it's going to be, you know, 12. So to see it for 10, pretty gnarly. Do you think, do you guys think, sorry, you guys didn't answer. How are you guys feeling about the price? I was actually surprised. Like Brandon, I thought it was going to be closer to 12, somewhere around there. I was you know, happily, you know, pleasantly surprised, but I thought it was going to come closer into like 12 or something like that. Just, you know, knowing, knowing how red prices things, but they surprised us with the Komodo. Honestly, they surprised us with the red V Raptor, honestly, too. Yeah. Yeah. How about, yeah. how about you, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect until we saw the specs and I think the pricing for what the, what they're offering with the Komodo X makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm happy it's at 10,000. All right. So, my question is, uh, and I think some people are wondering, is the Komodo going to pr change price now? Um, and I think some people, I guess, were hoping it would drop. But I did see in, yeah, brand's going up. I did see in, in Scott Jared Balcom's, said on the live stream it was going to go up. Which is, uh, I think it should have gone up a while ago in, in reality. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I, how do you guys feel about that? Do you feel like that's acceptable right now? Do you think it should have happened before? Well, if I decide to sell my Komodo later on, that's only <laughs> going to help me. <laughs> so, yeah, great. Nice work, Jared. Yeah, maybe that was a play to just keep the used market at bay. No, I'm just kidding. He, yeah, uh, just he feel mentioned... like they're not going to raise it unless they have. Right. He mentioned a few years, not a few years ago, maybe... Maybe mid last year, 
that the price of the Komodo may go up. But that was, I think, more due to part shortages or something. And I think that's what it was. This, it, you know, I'm trying to jog my memory. I think it was on a live stream or maybe he posted on his Instagram or something. So I'm not surprised that the price is going up and, you know, which is interesting that that's going up because that like closes the gap more so between the Komodo and the X, <clears throat> which makes me wonder, um, like, I feel like they're priced right now at, at, at a, at a tiered level where the gap makes sense. Closing the gap to me, I mean, it's like you're getting, you're starting to get to a point where you're like, should I just spend it? What is it going to Brandon? I didn't even hear him. Did he say what was it going to, what it was going to be? He didn't say, he just, he just said, I would bank on it going the other way. Kind of like, you know how he's been banking slash leaking <laughs> a whole bunch of things. When he says banking, like it pretty means it pretty much means it's a done deal. But he said, it, "I'm banking it's going the other way, meaning it's going up." Because a lot of people were speculating that a bunch of Komodos would start dropping in price, or that they would drop the retail price on the Komodo, and he was just like, "That's not going to happen." But no specifics. Do you think that there's um? a $4,000 price difference in the specs between these two cameras? Or do you think maybe that's another reason why you'd like, it would like you, you could see the Komodo for 7,000 or 7,500 or something like that. I don't know. Jeff, what do you think? It's hard. Cause it's like what they're offering on the X is a lot in some ways, a lot better. Like I was mentioning the audio earlier. So stuff like that to certain shooters, the $4,000 increase makes a huge deal. That's why I like I kind of agree with Tyler. It's weird if they if they raise the price of the Komodo unless they raise it like five hundred dollars, it's going to start closing in on the gap between Komodo mm -hmm. and Komodo X. And then it's like, why even buy a Komodo at that point? Just buy the X. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they're just really trying to like push the Komodo X as what people wanted as the A cam and then more people will just buy the Komodo what it was originally intended for. Maybe. I don't know. OK. All right, so let's but get into some of the their strategy department. So <laughs> they got smart people there. Yeah, absolutely. They're not messing around. Just a, uh, I'm just a dork using the camera. Yeah, and we're gonna hear it, sit here and nerd out about it. So, uh, all right, so let's get into some of those extras that are new for the camera. Um, I didn't hear too much about the audio. I know that there is no 3.5 millimeter jack on the camera, uh, comparing it to the Komodo. But what's up with the audio port? There's a module for that. Does anyone want to explain that or so know that better? Yeah, there's a couple of things. There is a brand new audio module coming out. There is the XLR adapter that they had for Raptor that is compatible because it's got the same five pin as that does. And then it has a five pin to 3.5 mil uh, cable that you can use. Oh, but so you can get it much 3.5. Yeah, it's got a much better preamp from what Jared just said, so. A better preamp than Raptor has, is what he said. Okay. That's cool. So what is this new audio module? Is that that V-Lock thingy that he was showing? Yeah, yeah, with the little pass-through. Actually, if he you, didn't say how much, and he didn't say when it was coming out. So if you go to, I wish I could try to put this on the screen for everybody. If I think I, if I try to add this in, I'm going to screw everything up. But if you go and look, if you go and look at, uh, the camera page in the description, there's a button to click on uh, the audio module thing. Is there really? Yeah, it's Let's uh, check it out. I, I, I wish I could add this to the screen somehow, but I'm really nervous to change the buttons. Here, I'll just I'll pull it up on my phone and show everybody. All right, can, or can you guys? It. Yeah, if you go to the Komodo X uh, in the description. Uh, about halfway down, it's, there's a link to it. It says DSMC3 red five pin to dual XLR adapter. Um, it looks like a little bolt-on job that you have. Yeah. yeah, that's not the audio module though. Okay. What's yeah, that thing? Yeah, I ordered the 3.5 thing. No, this no, is the... Josh, uh, let's see, just a second. I took a screen screen grab of it when he posted it because it was the best uh, image I had seen of it yet. But let's see. 
Let me see. It's ooh, that's that's pretty rough. But it's that uh, audio module thingy majigger right there. So that's all audio. Is there a battery in there? He, I know I saw that, but I didn't really explain what's going on in that thing. So there's a battery. There's an audio, but this is like the extension thing too. It's got like gen lock and a, a oh, bunch of other if... things. So control. All right, did, I don't know if this worked or not, but this is the thing I was talking about. Yeah, that that's work? the XLR that's what I was adapter. thinking of too. Yeah, so does that not plug into that new five pin? No, that does. Yes, yeah, it does. Okay. Okay. But I, I believe like he was saying options. there's an audio module, like a new audio module thingy, and I think that's it. I could be totally wrong. I get, I'm, track record says I'm totally wrong. Okay, so I don't even see that showing up under the accessories page. Um, all I see is this no, guy. No, it's not like announced or anything. He just kind of teased it on. Yeah, Scott's there are. Okay. Yeah, there are there are modules that aren't released yet that are coming. Okay. Well, this one was interesting just because I saw it in the because it says here the three point five mil adapter which you guys were talking about, and then this guy here. Oh, it's so, Komodo. Uh, the stormtrooper is already sold out. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. 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 It sold out website. like ten minutes ago. Wow. I would also bet they didn't make as many this time as they made for the original Komodo. They made a lot. Yeah, I heard like um, 400. Yeah. All right, so do we have a sense of how many they made? Do we have a guess? Do you want to know how many Stormtroopers for Komodo were made? A lot. Well, I have heard 400. 400. Yeah, no, no one has a clue. <laughs> no. Okay. There was never an official answer, but I've seen that they... The numbers went over a thousand, but that wasn't guaranteed that there was a number for every Komodo. Mm. Okay, so oh, when like is a serial number? I got... So just so everyone knows, like once the stormtroopers sold out today, like the next round will just be black, or I think it, is that how it usually works? Yeah, yes. I think it's like a month after the stormtroopers sell out, so probably a month ish from today. The okay. black ones will come out, I believe. Okay. Uh, so other things to talk about with this camera, it does not have the BP style batteries. We have a mini V lock on the back. Um, can you put a big V mount on there as well? Or does it have to be one of the mini ones to go onto the back? It's got to be one of the micro ones, like okay. uh, same as like on the, um, the V Raptor. Josh. Okay. Yes. So that module I showed you does accept the bigger V locks. Okay. So you need to... Yeah, it's just on the back where, like, it's the width of the battery, I think, is really what the problem is. And, if like, if you look at the straight at the back, I think that's what the issue is because that SDI and, um, like, all the I.O. kind of protrudes out a little bit. So the micro V mounts are the, the correct width to be able to, you know, accept those. Okay. And do... Uh... Okay. Are there a lot of companies that make those, or just is it proprietary to Red that little size? The micro batteries? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean like the like this the... one right here. Oh, hold on. I don't know if you're being shown. Let me switch this back over. Yeah, like this. This is like a, okay. One of the micro batteries. Yeah. Yeah, like Small Rig and FX Lion and like all those brands that are making those smaller batteries. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I know that these work with the V Raptor, so I'm really hoping that these work with Komodo. I don't see why they wouldn't, but. Okay. What's up, Matthew? Good to see you here, buddy. <laughs> uh, so what are some of the other connection upgrades? There's a lot more, inter there's more of an interface on this camera, right? Where have, are there more ports, more? I know there's like a uh, functionality for the, the new monitor, the DSMC3 monitor, and we wanna talk about that. Well, I, for one, am stoked that it frees up an SDI. I think everybody would agree the biggest complaint for Komodo is frying the SDI port. And if you, if you fried that, then you were just left with the top screen. So with Komodo X, you still have the top screen, but now you have the functional pogos, which give you the cableless like red DSMC3 monitor and an SDI. So... You've really got some redundancy there. 
I think that's really cool for me. That's one of the most exciting upgrades for sure is the IO to Komodo X. Okay, so we also have the audio port, which you talked about. Uh, and was there anything else that was added on? There was a USB, was that the USB port for the monitor? You, yeah, you've got USB uh, for, for the monitor, but Jared insinuated there was something else coming, but he couldn't talk about it. So there's gonna be some more functionality with that as well. So the USB on the back is kind of like a built-in Komodo link, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the zero latency, just plug it right into your phone or a, or an iPad. Yeah, so if, if we well, don't, this is this is the Komodo link right here. So I don't know if you can. That's some great autofocus, Tyler. Yeah, it is great. I don't even, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so that's the link right there. And it uses the pins on the bottom of the Komodo. And then it has a type C connection right here which it's not focusing on. So we'll just have to live with that, but you can trust me. <laughs> um, I can so totally say uh, it from way over there. Yeah. Just, we'll just do it right here. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm trying to be a YouTuber. <laughs> hey guys, check it out. Um, so it's got the type C on the front. Well, I guess it would be the back. So it looks like the Komodo, the, the Komodo X has that built in to the back, which is pretty cool. I assume that's what it's for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, all right. So I'm, what? Else? Yes. Cool. So what else about the uh, the mo we don't know about that other stuff coming? We uh, we have like the that big module that we that Brandon showed on the screen there. We don't really know exactly what the thing does, right? I mean, yeah, just I/O uh, expansion, bigger battery capability. So far, that's all I know. That's all I got. But I'm sure Jared will leak that in a few days. Were there extra SDI on it or something? Or was Not that, that like, I could uh, see. I think like, that was Genlock. Like Genlock or something. Oh, it's Genlock. Let me pull up the photo. Okay, so it's got DCN on the bottom, Genlock control time code, and I can't read the one on the top, but then there was something on the left side too. Of it. You know that Joker's going to be like 2000 bucks. Oh, Min yeah. minimum. I mean, if the END was 3500 so. <laughs> Well, the, you got to think with the END as well, like PL to RF adapters already are, are pretty not expensive. Cheap. And, um, you know, PL are designed to take a lot of abuse, more so than like EF mount and stuff because of how it locks in and everything. And then around that, you also have the, like the components and all that. Um, I should just pull it up on my screen to make yeah, sure let me see if I, I'm talking about. Let me see if I can get it up on the screen for everybody too. Um, so you got all these components, like the little ribs and is that what they're called but so you got all the, like, it's kind of like a front cage for it and then you have it's it's end which is cool and you get a clear and nd tray built in so and it looks like there's contacts there so is it like lpl yeah any any, L, P, any pl that supports the communication that's kind of like the big feature of it uh, supports yeah cook cook eye lenses yeah okay yeah. cool um, so there's a lot that goes into that. That the, the price of that honestly doesn't surprise me all that much, to be honest. And plus, you're getting like that mini cage. Oh yeah, yeah it comes yeah, with exactly. the cage. Which the I support. bet you, if I bet you the DSMC3 monitor wouldn't look as ridiculous on the camera if you had all that attached. Yeah, that was one of the well, things Jared, Jared did said. say. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. I, you and I were on the same page, Brandon. He, it's just, okay. he said with the Timmy ribs on the side, it doesn't look as, as crazy as it did in that picture where it's like coming mm -hmm. out the sides and, and yeah. just looking a little too big for it. On Scott's live stream, Jared had kind of like he had a white monitor and he brought it kind of close and then he's like, oh, I probably shouldn't. And I asked him, I was like, <laughs> can we get a – yeah. 
I was like, can we get a low profile five inch monitor, the DSM C3? And he went, hell yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. So he, he said, I'm embarrassed for how this thing kind of operates. He's kind of embarrassed by it being kind of janky. So it sounds like they're going to retool one and make it like specific for Komodo X. It's not coming anytime soon, cool. but it is coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, the thing with the cable list design, it's not really cable list on the DSMC three monitor, the seven inch one, the, the thing that he said, I, I think I heard him say that was like way more complicated than it should be is that RMI connection. And if you don't, the viewers yeah. don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what RMI stands for, but really messed up interface. We'll call it that. But basically <laughs> it's USB type C, but it, um, the way that it connects the like location of the pins and everything, like there's like three different companies. So there's red and then two other companies that kind of, all have to work together to make sure that everything lines up with video pass through and power and all kinds of different things. So he said, it's like kind of complicated to sort out. And I think that's why it is the way it is. Is that the gist of it? I mean, that's I what it sounded like, like it. when I was listening to the live stream. So, but I think he said that the pins on the Komodo X are able to transmit video and power a monitor. I think they were strong enough. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe they're just going back to the drawing board and he like, he brought up a good point and this is like the blessing and the curse. It's like a double edged sword. I remember with uh, like DSMC two cameras and the monitor, like the cable monitor was awesome unless you wanted to offset it you know what i mean instead of if you yeah. want to just keep it up top kind of like that then like on the monitor i don't know if i mean it's in the screen yeah um if you just keep it on top of the the camera then it's fine but if if you wanted to offset it for you know going for a shoulder mount or something like that that's where it kind of became a more complicated process on having a monitor so I think that's why they went with the semi cable design for that. And I, like, it's fine, but the, it's just so finicky. Like I use it on the, the a V Raptor XL on a shoot and granted it was a rental. So it's probably gotten a lot of abuse, but it was really finicky. The, the connection was really wonky and we did like, we mounted the camera uh, for a top down shot. And as soon as we mounted it top down, it just like cut out. It was the weirdest thing ever. So yeah, I don't, we're talking about, we're talking about this thing, right? Tyler. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the cable is basically to give it flexibility so you can move it around more than if it was just yeah. bolted on. Cause you can buy a longer cable. That's like three feet long or something like that. So you could, you know, put that on a, a gimbal, you know, like a Ronin two or something like that. Oh, uh, so that's and good. Be so able you're not to forced like, to keep it like right on the top of the Komodo. Exactly. So, and I think that's, that was their design intent for that R RMI design or whatever. I think, I think it, it would be like a much more attractive monitor if there was also an SDI input on it because right now it's kind of locked into the DSMC three ecosystem, which, you know, I get, and it makes it look a lot cleaner, but if that RMI interface goes out completely, like the input, not just the cable, or if your cable dies, then you're kind of out of an entire monitor. You know what I mean? So I, I just, but I mean, who knows? I'm just like, again, I'm just, uh... no, you bring up a good point. Cause like we had that issue happen on a DSMC two camera where the pins just stopped working. But I think on mm -hmm. DSMC two, we were able to work around it by there is an input in the red made monitor that let us continue to use that monitor, but through the cable instead of 
through the pins on the top and side of the camera. So that would that would be nice if, if they could do that. Have just an external way to plug something else in. SDI, whatever. Well, thank God right. Tilted yeah. isn't making this monitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Brandon, you're just gonna trash you're just gonna start trashing companies on my channel now. I thought you'd just do this on the podcast. <laughs> I gotta be honest. It just uh, it totally this spaced is... me around your channel. Feels like a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, Brandon's like Lacey eliminated the fact that we're ever going to get a sponsor on the podcast. He just trashes everybody. So, uh, anyway, hey, you do it too. I know. I know. I, hey, I don't. I'll, have the... I'll give you five bucks. I'll give you five bucks and sponsor a video. All right. We'll talk later. We'll, we'll talk later. That'll buy me a bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll buy it. Well, that It'll won't help us with our the editor. energy to edit a video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, other things I want to bring up: uh, CF Express Type B, which is a, a huge change. I know. I think everyone's happy about that. Um, yeah. Why are you guys, Why are you so pumped about that, Brandon? Well, I mean, that's media I already use. It's cheaper media. It's faster media. Offload speeds are faster. It's not legacy media, so. Yeah, all good things in CF Express B. Other than heat, little babies get hot. Yeah, we got to, I mean, the exhaust looks pretty big on the, the Komodo X, so I think we'll probably yeah. be okay. But I'm, I'm pretty stoked on Type B media as well. I've got a couple of Type B cards already, but I don't even know if they're, one of them's a SanDisk, and I don't think those are, red approved but with elq you, you're gonna we, try you it be, anyway you might be okay oh yeah i mean i'll give the old college yeah, the one i have is to uh sorry there's like that little that little lag we get they just they had to make it uh cf express b though i mean you it's it only makes sense to have the same cards across all the new cameras and not have to like yeah. use different cards for this and this and this like i don't know i i'm, I'm happy they did it for sure it, it just makes you can sh you know lo give a card to the DIT. Okay, you can go use it in a different camera because it's all the same card. They're all approved. Yeah. It's always this is crazy. I didn't. I didn't realize. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm, no. I'm go, no. Go. To, no. Change. Go ahead. Don't go for it, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you can do. Yeah, you can do. HQ. Eighty frames per second at six K. Which I'm surprised with. Yeah, that's that's surprising. I mean, I guess it's not surprising because Type B media can can handle it. But I mean, I, I certainly won't. I'll just be rocking ELQ for most stuff because most of my client work goes to the web. But um, that's pretty cool. 4K yeah. 120 is going to be great with a speed booster. Mm. Um, Amen. In 5K. I mean, I think honestly for this camera, unless I go with anamorphics, um, then it's just going to live. It's just going to live on, live on it. Yeah. All right. So, so let me just, get like a, yeah, let me just back up for a second. So if not everyone knows this on red cameras, when you crop in the resolution, it's actually cropping in on the the image as well because it's raw. So mm -hmm. when you say 4K, you're getting a crop. That's why Tyler's saying he can use the speed booster to sort of counteract that. Yeah, and you can use the. I mean, the, since this is a, a super 35 millimeter sensor, actually, a, a, like, there's not like an actual standard of super 35 like there is with um, uh, full frame stills format for full frame, but. Um, this is closer to like an APS-H sensor size. If you remember that, the EOS, the Canon EOS 1D Mark IV, I believe, was an APS-H size sensor. So it's kind of in between the full frame and uh, APS-C. So yeah, I'm totally a nerd, like people, people, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but with that, where I'm getting is like at, on full format on a full frame lens with the speed booster. When I say full format, that's kind of the, the term a lot of 
people on, on red cameras use for the, the full sensor, the full 6K sensor. If you use the speed booster or focal reducer on that, I get a little bit of vignetting on my full frame lenses. So like the 24 to 70, the Sigma Arc that I'm using right now, um, it'll actually vignette a little bit. I think it might just be with a, um, with a variable ND, but I, I think that it's still vignetted regardless, Mine but did. that's because, yeah. that's because it, it kind of makes it larger than the full frame image circle field of view. It's a little bit larger. So I think it turns out to like point zero point nine eight X or something or yeah somewhere around there. Around I'm there. seeing heads Very out. So uh, yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, but on in four K, it's like a two point six crop or something to full frame equivalent. But with the speed booster, that kind of brings you back into super thirty five millimeter territory. All right, I, so I can't in- remember the. In the 6K exactly. 17 by 9, it's 94%, 0.94. So that's why you could see some vignetting with yeah. a full-frame lens. That makes sense. Um, yeah, you got to keep track of all the crops and everything. But you could also shoot in 16 by 9 and probably avoid some of that, I'd guess. Yeah, or shoot 5K, which is like a proper APS-C size, and then you get like yeah. just under full-frame. But then you get better frame rates. Yeah, I actually, 5K was kind of the sweet, is kind of the sweet spot on the Komodo. For me, yeah, uh, I totally water. agree. Because you know, the Komodo, you'd get forty-eight frames per second, which is for the commercial world, like you don't really see a, a lot over forty-eight p. Because then it just starts like you know, a lot of a lot of ads and stuff are such fast pace, and you know you've got to pack everything into thirty seconds, and you pull something one hundred twenty frames per second into that, like that starts slowing things down a lot. And just from the pacing of an edit, I found that 48 P really fits in really nicely. But you were pretty excited about seeing 80 P and up on the Komodo X is just for certain things that you're thinking of besides. The yeah. Yeah. Work. Like, I mean, there, there are definitely times where slow motion is really important and really useful filming. I think filming wildlife and sports, I think those are really great examples of, um, you know, higher frame rates like Jeff, you know, with the, you film a lot of, you know, that he had that wakeboard park kind of near you. And I can't remember if it's a client of yours or a friend, but you know, filming that, you know, 5k 96 frames per second would look really cool. And yeah, no, absolutely. I think with sports, yeah, with sports and stuff, I think it's definitely, definitely nice to have. And, and that's why it's nice to have those frame rates on the X. With a global I'm over shutter. Here looking at the specs. Yeah, with a global shutter. I mean, that's that's huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could say personally from shooting some wildlife for fun, uh, 60 frames is kind of where I like to live. Uh, some stuff is cool higher, but yeah, but 40, 40 is kind of limiting, I would say, if you're just sticking to the 6K. Cool. I think uh, for the most I, part, I think for the most part, I, I used 40 for like wedding stuff. And that was really like it because it was like not slow enough to really get much out of it other than just slightly slow your scenes down. Yeah. And like product stuff, high frame rate's really good for that. Especially, you know, all the, you know, when people do the hamburger that, you know, all, all the parts of the hamburger go down, like stuff, stuff like that food. Uh, I do that one all of, the time. Yeah. Just constantly there are a lot of smashing reasons. food into each other. That's what I <laughs> like to do. I want to see that in your next video. That's all I have to say. Cinematic burger. Spend, spend a week making that shot, Brandon. I could see you doing that. Uh, all right. All right. So Joey's right. got a com- Joey's got a all right. Joey's got a comment here. Uh, I just want to release a full frame RF mount cinema camera. So I want to I want to hit this up for a little bit of a discussion on uh, how this fits in the rest of the market in terms of like competition stuff. I know Red kind of does their own thing, but they're part of the discussion, right? Like if you talk about other cinema cameras in the ten thousand dollar range. Um, what are your thoughts on what's out there and uh, how this sort of fits in with that? If anyone wants to start. Well, I mean, it's a hard one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, like you said, they're kind of in in a different world for the most part than, say, Canon or Sony. Canon and Sony are very big in the broadcast and ENG world, 
and the doc world where red actually is, is pretty big in the doc world as well. Um, and like broadcast and, and red starting to, you're starting to see a lot more reds on live broadcasts and sports events and stuff. But, um, you know, I think where, where red really pushes the envelope is number one with the frame rates. I mean, reds have always been known as the high frame rate option other than like phantom, you know, but, um, to me, I mean, and then obviously in the, the motion picture industry, like actual, like, you know, filming movies and stuff. And when I said Sony, I wasn't really talking about the, the Venice line. I was kind of talking more of like the FX dine and under because we're talking kind of in that price point. Yeah, so how do you guys think if, like, I'm just thinking about competition in terms of price. We're talking FX9 is $9,000. No, $11,000, right? They didn't drop the price of that one. That was the, the Canon cameras. The uh, C500 Mark II is 11000 now. What is the right? C300 Mark III? Do you remember? They lowered it to like 9000 9? Yeah. Okay. Which still, most people are going to buy a C70, but, you know, like, for the most part. Uh, but that's like in the Canon Sony world, that's kind of what you're talking about. Um, and I, it's interesting because I know a lot of people like to look at the $6,000 price mark and say like, how does the Komodo, uh, match up with the C70 and the FX6 and like the Komodo is such a different camera than those two other cameras. The only thing it really is the price. Like that's the only thing we're talking about here. So do you think that like that $10,000 Komodo X, like how that fits in with like, let's say the FX9 and the C500 Mark II, um, are they just completely different in terms of like, who's going to be using them? I almost think yeah, they're I mean, I completely think we... different, but that's just me. You know, the yeah, global I... shutter, it's like, it sets it so far apart. If for like anybody who needs that global shutter, the Komodo is your only option in that kind of camera with, you know, the frame rates and the image quality. Uh, until, you know, Sony or whoever comes out with the camera that has similar features to Komodo. Well, uh, Ecamm came came out with their global shutter version, but I don't know how good it is. Not did I say Ecam? Yeah. I meant Z Cam. Sorry, they had this Z Cam. <laughs> yeah, we know what you're talking about. Like Ecam, is, that is, using that? is it a full frame global shutter or is it super thirty five? No, it's it's basically the exact same thing as Komodo, same price. So that's been out for a, a while, hasn't it? I think like same frame years. rates maybe a bit higher. Yeah, it's been out for a little bit. Um, but anyway, uh, as far yeah, as like I mean, a Komodo X competitor, there isn't. Yeah, Josh, I would say, you know, I think people have budgets, right? And they're start they look at different options in the market. And when, you know, you're you're budgeting and you're forecasting for your next twelve to thirty six months and you're looking at your current cash flow and, and you're looking at what price point you're comfortable putting towards a camera a camera system and or a camera body i mean any camera system you buy you're gonna obviously gonna have more but let's say people are like ah, okay i got ten thousand for a camera body they're going to look at those other cameras naturally and they're gonna see what stacks up okay fx9 you have a full frame sensor right yeah full frame yeah okay um, C500, you have full frame, but the frame rates aren't really there. They're pretty, pretty lackluster compared to the competition in that price point. Then you have the C300, which is super 35, but has frame rates, older EF mount, same as the C500, uh, but has a lot of professional IO, you know, time code and Genlock and stuff and then you but you know it's a rolling shutter sensor and then you have the komodo where it has an rf mount and it has global shutter and for a lot of people they may say okay well i could slap a focal reducer on there get a full frame field of view equivalent and call it a day but then you also got to look at autofocus needs you know the, the komodo at least this komodo doesn't have great autofocus it has okay autofocus that works sometimes but you know if autofocus is really important then you gotta you know I, so i think like people are going to look in that price point and kind of compare different 
features, I would say, and, you know, not necessarily always the right way to look at it, but if you're going to get into a brand new camera system and you're not married to a particular lens mount, then, you know, those are definitely considerations for potential buyers. I think it's pretty on point right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also uh, have next, to... Yeah, next, <laughs> Tyler's got that one. Uh, also, we got to <laughs> factor in accessories and rigging out and stuff because I know as someone who is starting out with a Komodo, like, you can't just get a Komodo and get rolling. Like, there's stuff that you need to make it going. So um, you have to factor that in, too. Because, like, for me, like, I grab my C70. I have a memory card. comes with a battery. Like, you put a lens on it. Like... You know, like the Komodo is not that simple or the Komodo X. So not that you don't need those extra, some extra stuff for some of those other cameras too, but I think there's more that comes with it uh, in some of those cameras. Basically but, you're saying just like the Komodo, it's not a $10,000 camera. It's a 10,000 starting and then figure out what you need. And then it, it really becomes a much more expensive beast with like with any red. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that, I think, I think the important thing to also mention about that is, you know, a lot of people, like like myself, you know, I have RF lenses and I already have V mount batteries and I actually have some CF Express type B cars jury still out if those are gonna actually work or not. But um you know there are people that like already have a number of V mount batteries. Where the Komodo, if you had a bunch of V mount batteries, you were forced to get a plate, a adapted plate to be able to use V mount batteries. You know, so you know, I think with Komodo X and like with the V Raptor, apart from you know the DSM three DSM C three monitor, I think a lot of people had a lot of those things already in their kit. And this is for you know, obviously, I'm not talking to somebody that you know they're going to buy their first camera, which I would argue a Komodo X might not be the <laughs> the wisest first camera to purchase. But you know, if you have the send money, it. and that's what you want to do. You should just go ahead and send do it. it. Yeah, send it. But like. <laughs> Like when I got this Komodo, like I already had the small HD monitor. I already had a bunch of V mount batteries. I already had CFast 2.0 cards. So it was really, I just needed a V mount plate to get, get up and running with the Komodo. So there's definitely different groups of people here. Obviously, like someone like yourself, Tyler, who's been in this for a little while, has a lot of these accessories. But maybe someone who's like trying to upgrade from a, a mirrorless camera or something, maybe like an FX3 who wants like a more proper cinema camera. That's the kind of stuff I'm thinking about. There's like definitely certain accessories, uh, but like Brandon, for you, like hop up to the X, like you have a lot of the stuff already, so it's a little bit easier yeah. for you. Yeah, it was really easy. I bought a V mount, and that was it. Everything else I had, so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, like, oh my gosh, like thinking of all the different modules and everything that I was going to have to put on this to make it like pretty baller. But also the same with the Komodo. You know, that was my first foray into red. But I had RF, uh, I had RF lenses. I had a CFast from my Blackmagic 6K Pro, and then it was like, oh, I found two BP Jupio batteries that cost, like, you know, 150 bucks, and then it was like, oh, okay, we're good to go. How much is the DSMC3 monitor though? Isn't it like 1500 or something like that, or am I way off? Twenty seven, you're way off. Yeah, <laughs> it's red, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah. The sorry, accessories... sorry, my bad, my bad. Yeah, you're you're not even close, bro. Uh, no, just kidding. The, the accessories are pricey Get for out sure. Of the but, but, you, but you pay for those. <laughs> you pay for those conveniences and the, the slickness of it, right? Yeah, uh, of yeah. Course, there's, of course, there's definitely a red tax stamped on top of that as well. But like uh, you said, there's so much going on that you would expect it to be expensive, especially if like they're going out to small HD and they're going out to another company. They're having to do all that. They're passing on the expense, but it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, I like, it, it's not surprising. And I mean, it like it's sticker shock looking, you know, like at the price of that monitor, but you know, there are a lot of creature comforts for DSMC three that come with that monitor. And I loved the DSMC2 monitor. I mean, it was, I feel like this word is overused now, but it, it was so streamlined. I mean, it really was like, it was in like just no cables. I mean, that's like for like dock shooting, like that's awesome to be able to like, 
you know, really like run and gun and not have to worry about a cable snagging on something or whatever, you know, it, it was just a really nice setup. So, I mean, I agree with you for sure that, you know, the red tax is on top of that, but they put a lot of design into it and R and D into it to make it a, usually a really great experience. And they're 100%. a pretty small And that's company. why it's an ACAM. Yeah. And, and they're American based, you know, like support, support local. It's uh they've, they've got a, I love how they do listen to what we want. So I think a lot of the things we're talking about today, the, the little things, I think they are going to come out just like we saw with Komodo. It may not be in the next month or two. It may be six months down the line, but they'll come. Yeah, I mean, the Komodo X is basically a, a direct response to customer feedback. Yeah, and it sounds like we're going to see a lot more coming out. Like, I don't know, the Jared hopped onto the Scott Balcom stream before this, before we started. And he was like, you know, talking about the module and different things they're going to introduce in terms of updates and stuff. And it's amazing how much the X, the, the, right, the original Komodo has updated over the last few years and how it's become such a different camera. So yeah, I, it's, it's great to see like a camera company that's really like interacting. And like, I know Tyler, like we had, we were talking about some audio issues that we had with the Komodo and we like, and you said, mentioned it to Jared and he fixed it. Like, like imagine another, like there's no way I could have that could happen with Sony or Canon. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Anson's got a question here. It's good seeing here, Anson. Uh, I'm going to be that guy, Ursa 12K uh, with the optical low pass filter or Komodo X. You you know the answer, Anson. <laughs> he just wants to be that guy. So I think like between if you like carrying Ursa, a camera around like this, hey guys, I'm ready to shoot. I absolutely love the form factor of the Ursa. I used to have one, and I loved it. And the like the EF mount is what it is and it's still a great mount um and you have internal nds and you have built-in xlr where the, the the preamps are are pretty good and it's just a matter really like when i look at the two of those cameras it's really a a sensor decision do i want the look of ursa or do i want the look of red and if i could have both i would because the ursa is a, I mean the 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 12k is like it, it it looks like Alexa. I mean, it looks so good, and you know, reds definitely just have a different look. So, it, honestly, like it, it's personal preference, and it's super cool that you can punch into all the way to six K or something, and and not change the crop of the sensor, which is pretty cool. It, you know, it's really the first of its kind to really do that in a cinema camera i would say i also feel like it's if you're dealing in multi-camera environments what are you shooting with more are you are you shooting with other black magic cameras because then a 12k makes total sense same color science yeah. but if you're shooting with other reds all the time why not get the camera that matches the color science same with canon you know it's that that's such a huge factor in today's world with so many more people not doing single cam so I, so many shoots i do now it's like everything's multi-cam at least at least two camera so, so figuring out the right camera to match your, your B cam or your A cam makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. One of the big That's things one of my really... favorite. Good. I was just going to say, speaking of multi-cam, that's like one of my favorite things about red is that red control pro and red control, just how nice it is to operate your camera off that app. And if you've got multiple DSM C threes <clears throat> or Komodos, you can link them all on an app and operate them as like a single operator. That's pretty. Iris, you know, sound, all sorts of stuff. Pretty nuts. I don't know of another camera that can do that. All right. My, my power just flickered here. So I don't know if we're still rolling, hopefully. <laughs> I can see everybody still. I hear you. Okay, yeah, I, have everything. Everything. I think everything in here is on a UPS, so we'll see how, I think we're still rolling. Awesome. <laughs> uh, the, the one thing that drew me away from the Ursa was the lack of internal ProRes. And I get why they did that. I mean, Blackmagic Raw is a fantastic codec, and 
if you're just if you're just doing your own productions then it doesn't matter like who cares what you what acquisition format you capture in but you know i i do a lot where i hand the footage off to you know whatever production company that hired me or whatever if i dp or cam op or whatever and nobody would nobody wanted black magic raw files they just wanted prores so um that was kind of a big letdown with the ursa 12k and really one of the reasons why i should have sold the ursa g2 is because it like i just realized like had realized it's never going to be supported so gen 5 color was never going to go to it so um that was kind of big i mean and the cool thing with komodo is most people prefer to get the r3d files even though it shoots prores internally every nle supports it it's really easy to edit and every editor and colorist just knows their their way around r3d and it's just a much more common format than black magic raw that said i do love black magic raw i think it's an awesome codec to work with yeah i'm, I'm totally with you there tyler i had a production i worked on in, in 2019 and i tried giving them the black magic raw from the pocket 6k and they were they were not having it they wanted me to transcode everything in a prores and i'm like no nah, i'll just never i'll just shoot in prores for the rest of the time because i'm not going to transcode it all yeah yeah and like you don't you don't really get that from like handing over r3d files like i've, I've never had someone say like ah oh, can you just give me prores they're like r3d yeah sweet cool they don't even ask they're like are oh, you shooting yeah. on a red great you know it pretty much so yeah there was another thing too i just forgot oh well it'll come back to me in like 10 minutes what we're like 10 conversations beyond this yeah, well, uh, my question also, there was uh, questions about uh, autofocus improvements. Uh, Jared had said, like, we will see a little bit better autofocus, but probably not going to be as reliable as some of us are used to with mirrorless cameras. Um, are there any other improvements that we haven't mentioned before, other than some of the hardware stuff? Um, we mentioned hardware, but I don't think we really talked about the location of the hardware of the I.O., and for me, that's <clears throat> awesome because the location of the SDI on the yes. Komodo is <laughs> such, such a pain. A pain in the like butt. if you run, <laughs> it, I mean, it doesn't matter if you here. run with BP batteries or with just regular uh, a V mount plate or something. It's such a pain to get the SDI in and out. To especially whatever. with the I protocol. think that's probably why a lot of people. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll just leave it plugged in to the Komodo under the body side and then plug it into the accessory after everything's powered up. So you're saying that but it's, yeah, it's, it's you're, you're going to appreciate thing. the fact that the battery is off to one side and then you don't have to like reach underneath to get the ports. They're all off to the one side. Yeah, well, even look at there right exactly. there. The SDI sticks out instead of being recessed into the body, which just makes it so much easier to access. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, totally. Oh. The one thing I wish that they had just built in, I know there's the EX, the, you know, the extension port, so you can, you know, kind of use that for, for whatever. I think it's the same nine pin as, as the Komodo, but, um, I do wish there was a, a time code in just on the back of the camera. That'd have been really cool to see. Yeah. But I mean, I'm where totally would you put that you. in? Like, where would you put that in? I mean, you can use the extension as with the XD port as as that. And like, since there's commo the DSMC three monitor compatibility, it's less of an issue. It's a twenty eight hundred dollar issue, unless you get that expansion module, whatever whatever that's going to be priced at. But uh, for multi cam stuff, I mean, having time code is critical. And if I were to bring, you know, this monitor over with Komodo control, I have to use that port, that DXD port on the back to be able to control the monitor. So yeah, that's like, that's the only like, oh man, but it's not at the end of the day, not that big of a deal. Uh, it, it, I do part of the reason I'm, oh, go ahead. 
Oh, the, one of the reasons I'm with I'm totally with you, Tyler, on the the gen lock is I found that productions that I'm on that require time code. It, it could have just been my luck of the draw, but all the Komodo owners I've shot with, none of them even had the time code cable. So like I would have to use my cable for every Komodo, and it would just jam take it. extra time. Yeah, I would have to yeah. jam all the Komodos. <laughs> yeah, I mean like, that's why you know, I got. I this. just let it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. It was just a time sucker. I had to basically give um, the sound guy my my cord and just be like, "All right, jam everybody's Komodo every time," because I can't I can't think about this. This is on you, man. Yeah, I mean, and it's not a common it's not a common um, SDI cable. Like, you know, really common would be like the BNC cable, and that's you know why one of the reasons why I got this. This is like the expansion module for the Komodo. It's got Genlock and. Uh, time code gpi and then control on there as well and you know i just had a, sh a shoot out and uh out in san diego where i used two komodos and you know that's how i ran time code i had the i had one of those nine pin ext cables to three and a half mil whatever it is to run out of one of my time good boxes and then i used the bnc cable for that to run time code and it makes a big difference it really does you know having a standard connection for time code even a three and a half mil would have been cool yeah especially when you're working with the sound guy they're only really going to have like the bnc they're not they're never going to have the the red extension so it's like you just work with what they have and they can just come connect and, and you're good to go you don't have to think about it but maybe, yeah that's what i always just come with those cables yeah Mm. Um, I'm with Anton's you. asking, is there any difference between Stormtrooper other than the body color? Is there anything in the camera? Okay. Um, no. Nope. Scott mentioned that a Stormtrooper usually comes with two-year oh. warranty, whereas the black yeah. comes with a one-year warranty typically. So, which I it's good. That's awesome. It's probably because Stormtroopers are typically like beta testers, honestly. But they, they didn't do that with the original Komodo. They only did that for people who bought the colored um, cameras on the, on oh, the original okay. Komodo. So, gotcha. the, so I don't know if that's the case with the Stormtrooper. I'm assuming since it's the same price, probably not. Um, but yeah, th that was a big thing I found out when I was doing the extended warranty. Because it wasn't Scott that told me that. It was Tim. He was like, uh, Tim Doss if from the, the groups. He's yeah. like, oh, didn't she get the two-year? And I'm like, no. Because like it, it shows you on the website, essentially. Oh yeah, your it's right here. Expires. It says one year. Yeah, it says one year standard warranty. So never mind. I just yeah. lied to everybody on this live stream. No, no, Sorry, dude, it's it's it, if they don't if they don't put that information out there, it's like kind Wait of a behind sec. the scenes. How do you know? I saw earlier on Red's website for Komodo X Stormtrooper, it had a two year uh, warranty. Two year? Oh, maybe they changed that. Yeah. Well, it could have also just been the white Komodos that they didn't do the two year warranty for. Um, so it could it could be that way with most stormtrooper cameras. They do the the two year. It's just maybe because of how many they sold. I don't know. But I just when I had I saw it when I had yeah, to they, get my extended warranty. Yeah, who knows? N not like you guys. It was any part of your decision. I'm buying a stormtrooper today. So <laughs> no, not, not no, no. I I I didn't even know there was a two year with stormtrooper. I just. Which I need to add that. I didn't add that on my thingy. <clears throat> I think little, if it works the same way, you have thingy. you have uh, within the yeah, first six, six months. months yeah, yeah, I'll add that on. All right. So in addition to you, uh, you guys have talked about the port, lo port locations and accessibility and stuff. It also has another record button on the front, which I think is a huge addition uh, because I know yes. a lot of people complained about the record button just being – you know, over here on the side, kind of awkwardly placed in some situations. Um, and then the locking RF mod, I think, is awesome, too. I don't know if we did mention, I know we mentioned it before, but I think those are big upgrades for the camera. Yeah, I mean, um, certain lenses, certain lenses, were, like, were loose on Komodo. Not, I, I didn't have a lot of experience with, like, massively loose lenses, but there's, like, it was mostly third-party lenses that I had the issue with, where they were, like, a little too loose for my comfort where I knew if I put a follow focus on this thing, 
I'm going to get some jiggle on there. So it's nice to have that locking port uh, to kind of fix yeah, that. Yeah, especially, especially for PL lenses because, you know, that's locked in on the PL side, but on the RF side, not so much. Okay. I and love then that on the... The, the e, e and D can be used on Komodo as well? Yeah, Looks so like there's it. a Komodo kit and a, a V-Raptor kit because the right. body did, sizes are a little different. Did you guys order one of those? That's a negative Ghost Rider. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and See I know we go. were, yeah. Uh, and then we, I know we were chatting beforehand, Tyler, but PL is kind of like an end amount. Like you can't adapt anything to PL, right? Not really. Okay. The way that the mount, I mean, like the, the element kind of protrudes back. Okay. So, but it's... I wonder if like with that END, if like, like the, I, I love the Lawa and Animorphs, but they're kind of like the, even the PL versions were really designed still with the mirrorless mount in mind. So I wonder if that END would work with the, the Nanomorph, the way it protrudes back. But that's the only lens I could think of. But like, man, that's going to be You're awesome. Point, for like, that's going to be awesome for like, you know, Mercury and Orion users. And yeah, I mean, that's going to be awesome. If I was a betting man, the same rules that go to that PL speed booster that Metabones makes probably apply to this one where like specific lenses work, specific ones don't because of the rear protrusion. Yeah, it could be. So that's going to be a very specific use case in in reality. Yeah, I mean, I don't think... Yeah, I mean, I don't think a lot of people... Sorry about the mic noise. Um, I, think a, I think a lot of people that are running productions with PL lenses, I think, have kind of already gotten this. We'll have that sorted out. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, when is it that M42 to PL sometimes? Yeah, so that they're generally speaking, what I was saying with PL is not adapting or other lenses adapting to PL, but M42, I think, is one of those exceptions. Mm -hmm. I've actually 3D printed a, an M42 to, to PL uh, adapter. I completely forgot about that. All right. Uh, I don't have any PL lenses, so I am definitely not ordering a $3,500 END for my Komodo. So uh, negative on oh, my part on, as well. Dude. You didn't even order it, Tyler. So tell him to go to the comments. <laughs> I've got emails, text, and seeing these comments at the same time. What are we listening to right now? <laughs> what? Yeah, what emails, text, and comments Sorry. all at the same time. I, uh, I'm asking Belkin about the warranty thing. Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, he's double streaming. I, yeah. I want to get. I want to get to the bottom of it. it yeah, Brandon's also. Welcome. This one's too oh, oh. boring. So I'm watching another one. Yeah, that, that's it's what scared. I was gonna say. Still, uh... I was gonna say Brandon's ADD <laughs> just kicked in. He's like, it's not holding my attention. I need something else. Um, Dude, Scott's gonna be Scott. Scott will be streaming until. I mean, at least. At least midnight. Like, midnight. Yeah. Well, he didn't answer. So. Okay. Um, is Jared not on there anymore? No. no. Gotcha. He would have been a good one. To, to Let's focus on ask. Josh's live stream, though. Jeff. It's okay. Josh, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, what are what are some other? I mean, you guys. We. It's it's been interesting as someone who, like I'm not. I don't know any of this stuff ahead of time, and it sounds like it was pretty tight lipped but it seemed like it went from like an idea, a rumor, to like you can buy the camera in like weeks, which. I think it was pretty remarkable. Two, Two weeks. weeks. And yeah, crazy. it's crazy uh, that it happened so quickly. I think when we when we heard it was coming out, we thought of an announcement. And then you could buy it today. Are they shipping them this week? Yeah. They're the white shipped ones. today. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I, All right. I literally just got my shipping notification. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, but we don't know about the next round of them or whatever, when that's going to be available and all that. But I think for people that wanted them, they knew it was coming. They probably hopped on it today. Yeah. Well, now I need to check if I got one. <laughs> yeah, Not tough. Tyler's like, I'm feeling a little lonely right here. I need to get my confirmation right now. I'll put my pre-order in. <laughs> 
Uh, I remember I was telling Scott when, when – uh, not Scott. I was telling Josh when he's like, yeah, when do you think they're going to come out? I'm like, oh, like six months. And it was like a week later. It's like, nah, it's like in a week. <laughs> they're coming out in a week. I just yeah, love I thought how – sure it was going to be like three. Yeah, the, few. the fall or whatever. Uh, I just love how different the whole – uh, releases, you know, having someone who follows like the other companies and how they release things, and this was just like a couple of leaks, and everyone's excited, and everyone's ready to spend ten thousand dollars like a week later. So uh, it's just it's 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 amazing to me to watch this whole thing go down and how excited people get. I love it. I just love it. I'm excited for you guys to get your cameras too. Um, so what do you guys what are you guys most excited about? I know it's like it's always new tech and stuff, but what was sort of the things that sort of pushed you over the edge for you, Brandon? In terms of features it's or take, yeah it's taking my favorite camera and just making it much better so like yes okay and i i told you when we were doing our our podcast with our five favorites i was like if they could make this and then give me these things i would get it and i didn't think they were going to do it anytime soon and so they did it and they exceeded my expectations from especially like a frame rate standpoint. I didn't think we would get, you know, 80 in HQ at, you know, 6K. I don't think we were going to get everything that's coming with it. So to have the USB-C and extra SDI, I thought we were going to get maybe frame rates and maybe a few other things. We didn't get internal ND, but whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm so pumped. I love my Komodo so much. I use it at every opportunity that I can. Like anytime I want to go make something cool for myself, I'm grabbing that. I don't grab my R5C. I don't grab my C70. I grab my Komodo. It's so small. That was the other thing. Was, now we have something that's far better, and it's only a little bit bigger. I was worried that they were going to make it, you know, Raptor-ish size, much bigger. And I was like, that's part of the allure for me is its size. So knowing that I'll have something that's just slightly bigger, but so much better is <laughs> really exciting, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and for you, Tyler, I feel like this camera is really designed for someone like yourself uh, who does a lot of different things, who uh, is also kind of a solar operator sometimes uh, and has been using your Komodo as an A-cam. Um, and so you're going to run this as a pair or mostly going to use the X? Like, how does this fit in for you moving forwards? Yeah, X would definitely be the A. And then the Komodo would be, you know, B cam and gimbal cam. Um, you know, I've got it, you know, fully set up for, you know, production stuff. And so, yeah, I mean... They're they're both su such good sizes that like they can. I think the Komodo X can do everything the Komodo can. Just the not the other way around, yeah. just because of the V mount. Now, if you get like one of those really thin V mounts, like the little forty five micros, I bet you it would still fly on a gimbal pretty easily. I feel like a lot of people who dual run the Komodo X and the Komodo for now on, I think the Komodo is going to be like their gimbal cam their utility cam yeah. like all their their crash cam mm -hmm. it's gonna they're gonna put le, they're gonna let bp cam uh batteries live on that thing and they're just gonna keep it as small as possible which is cool that's what i guess it was meant for i'm for yeah, me for i sure. think of all the times that i've gone on a shoot or done a project and i've had to bring my c70 because it's like oh this is my audio camera like this is the thing that has good audio and I can still be small to now be able to replace that and just use one camera to do it all. The fast paced stuff, the cool looking stuff and the audio stuff. Oh, so stoked. So is this going to replace fellas, basically gotta... the C70? Oh, yeah, God, this, Tyler. this, I, I'll sell the C70 and peace, Tyler. All right, Tyler. Yeah, Thanks I so got to roll. I got to roll y'all. Baby's waking Thanks. up. Th all right, dude. Thanks so much. Great chat, Tyler. All right, guys. Well, uh, maybe we should wrap this up too. I don't know if you guys have much more to add. Uh, I think we covered the camera pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm looking forward to it getting out in people's hands. And uh, I'll definitely do a, 
a first look as soon as I get it. I might do one of those crazy unboxing videos again, but uh, I'll that won't definitely be quick. go shoot that a won't... bunch of different stuff. That won't be quick. <laughs> no, that that one took me about a day, but I'll okay. set it up as soon as I get the. Uh, it's on its way. I'll start setting everything up. So right when it gets here, I can start filming. Okay. We need a whole uh, video of the journey from when you get that notification to when it comes out of the box. <laughs> were you Casey filming? Nice you style. Were you filming yourself today while you're ordering it? That would have been funny. Oh no, I didn't. Damn yeah, it. That would, yeah, you can re, you can redo it. No one's gonna know, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The power of editing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you stopping by today to hang out and nerd out about the new camera. Uh, I think we're all pumped about it, even if we're not buying it. Like Jeff and I, we're still excited. And we're talking about it constantly. So, thanks for coming by, guys. I was just pumped. I was just pumped that I got to actually talk to Jeff now. In yeah, person. I was. I was pumped. I got to talk to you guys in person. I mean, I talk to Josh all the time, but this is just a great combo. <laughs> we got to nerd out on cameras for a while. So, nothing. Better. Have, we'll time. have to do it again soon. The next time we have a red release. No, maybe somebody before then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. All right, guys. Take care. Peace. All right. So thanks, everyone, for coming by today. Sorry about all the hiccups at the beginning, but I appreciate uh, everyone stopping by. And uh, really excited about this. Even though in person I'm not picking one up, it's uh, really cool to see all this. So thanks so much, and we'll see you real soon.